Kia ora Tiwi and welcome to The Chew, coming at you from the studios here in Kaia Muriwai, Arrowtown. Ko Arrowtown Dad TNA and today we are chewing the fat with Arn Burgess. Kia ora bro. Kia ora bro, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Alright, so we'll kick things off, we'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll ask you to introduce yourself bro and then mm. we'll have a bit of a chat about where you grew up. Cool, cool. Oh, uh, Kwa Ambu just talk to Ingoa, uh, Tene Te Uri o Ngati Whātua Awara Kei. Yes. Yeah. Uh, me, me Ngati Kota uh, Patukeha uh, ki raro i te korowai o, o uh, te iwi nui a ngai, uh, Ngāpui. Um, uh, yeah, uh, e noho ana au uh, ki uh, te council, council flats of um, Henley's Farm. Uh, yeah, half of council seem to live there. Uh, these days, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much me, bro. Sweet. So we where, whereabouts were you born, bro? Uh yes, yeah, so I was born in uh, Tamaki Makoto. Um, the big yeah, smoke. Big smoke, yeah, and uh, yeah, and in, in, in the beautiful year of nineteen eighty three. Ooh, good year that, bro. Great year. Good year. Great year. Yeah. Um, and. So you did all your early schooling in, in Auckland? Hi bro, so um, yeah, born in Auckland, we moved, mum moved us to Aussie for a wee bit, oh, yeah. uh, you know, even the draw to Māori uh, back then was as strong as it is today, yeah. um, and lived in Bondi for uh, three or four years. Sure. Yeah, and then Wonder. came with back to Tamaki Maoris, bro. with all the other Māori, <laughs> yeah, I uh, lived above a pub, um, and uh, yeah, their mum bought, bought, uh, bought me back to uh, Tamaki when she was pregnant with my with my um, younger sister. So, oh yeah, cool. Yeah, lived there till I was uh, uh, seven, and then um, we moved down to Ōtautahi. Uh, oh really? With, with At my age auntie. Seven. Yeah, so me, my mum, uh, my sister, yeah, uh, moved down to to to, to Christchurch to, to live with my auntie, and uh, yeah, pretty much uh, between Christchurch and uh, Te Whanganui Atara, um for my school holidays, where my dad was living. Oh, yeah. your dad's living in Welly. Yeah, Wellies. Yeah, yeah so cool. Mum and him split when they were in in Sydney. And, oh, yeah. Uh, he went back to Ellie's and she, she brought us back to, to Auckland and yeah, yeah, eventually just started coming south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You found the mainland, bro. Found the mainland, brother. Um, and uh, where'd you land? Or we where, you spend most of your time growing up in Christchurch? Uh, so mainly south, so close to the Kashmir Hills. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah um, Ooh, that's Kaitahu, a flash uh, area, bro. Yeah, Te Pātaka Kai or uh, Rākau Hautu. Oh, uh, Kāpai. Or, uh, yeah, what's that? Te Iringa or Kahukura is the name of the port hills. Oh, really? I believe, yeah. Didn't, yeah. Know, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Wicked. So, yeah, that's where we grew up. Um, but, yeah, pretty much every school holidays either uh, go north to... Um, to uh, Te Whanganui Atara to stay with my, my dad and my stepmum. Uh, or we actually spent quite a lot of uh, time in Te Kohudo, Kurao. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, was it? Just south of Waimati. So, yeah. yeah. Kurao. Yeah. Kurao. Yeah, I mm. know the place. Oh, that's Richie McCaw country, eh? Richie McCaw country, yeah. yeah. He's from the Hakataramia Valley. So, oh, is he? Which is about five minutes outside of 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 Kurao. Ah. Um, but uh, yeah. Oh, a nice one. So would you would you consider yourself to be a South Islander these days, bro? Oh, 100%, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Um Yeah, yeah. although I don't I don't know if I can get down with their supporting of their of their Cantabrian rugby teams and whatnot. Um, not this year, bro. They not this year. This year yeah. Yeah. Although I'm holding out a little bit of hope cuz my uh my younger brother's in the Crusaders' development, so if oh, they keep hey. going pretty crap, then maybe he'll get the call up. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, that's pretty good, bro. Yeah, bro. What yeah. club does he play for? So our fa- our whānau club, Sydenham. So, Sydenham. Yeah. yeah, so since my younger brothers were, were very small, that's been our club. So my old man uh, is a professional coach, rugby coach. 
Sweet. Uh, my younger brothers. So when I say my old man's my stepfather. Yeah. Um, he's he's the fella from from Koo Rao. Ah. Uh, but he's a professional coach. So he's the head coach of the Tanifa. Um, up in up in Northland. Oh, is he the Tanifa coach? Yeah, bro. As of this year, yeah. So oh. he was down south with um with the Stags with Southland. Did a bit of a stint for Tonga at the World Cup. And now he's up in, uh, Bro. Um, up in 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 Whangarei, So yeah, yeah, it's quite he's, funny. He, he's uh, yeah, he's the most Pakia Pakia you can come across. Yeah, and for some reason, just him and brown people on the rugby he field. He knows how to he knows how to coach them, yeah, bro. He, he yeah. knows how to connect. Yeah, yeah, you do get that, eh? Mm. Um, oh, so you played for Sydney as well as a young fella? Oh yeah, bro. But um, yeah, my. Uh, I was okay at most sports, but I was never any good at any of them. Yeah, so, uh, oh, I know how you feel, bro. Yeah, bro. I yeah. love a bit of coaching myself, but um, yeah, yeah. Moving down here, uh, I think my my wife would kill me if I went back to coaching. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Um, you you find that we're naturals, bro. I find that we're yeah. naturals. The old Maori gene. There's something yeah. about Maori being able to play sport because I'm. I'm the same, bro. Like, mm. I played rugby, basketball, surfed, did, you know, even volleyball. Mm, mm. But I was never good at any of it. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll play any sport in the world. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I can never quite, what is it? Jack of all trades, master of master none. Master of none. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's sort of me. Yeah. 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 Now nah, that's good. Sometimes you don't need to be the master, bro. Sometimes it's easy enough nah, to be, you know, too much pressure. Well, sport's about enjoyment, mate. So yeah. it's about, you know, keeping us out of the pub, um, yeah. you know, and uh, giving us something to do so we don't get bored. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, well, were you in danger of getting bored when you are a young fella, bro? Oh, yeah, I definitely went through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely went that through phase. Uh, the, the phase. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, met my, uh, my lovely... Uh, my lovely wife, about 12. Man, I'm gonna get in trouble. Oh, you better get it right, bro. 12 years ago, I think. Yeah, we were 10 years married this year, so 12 years ago. Sweet. Um, and yeah, straight and narrow since then, brother. Straight yeah, as an arrow, or straight straight straight. As a, yeah, oh, that yeah. arrow gets a bit crooked every now and then, eh, bro? Uh, every now and then, but um, <laughs> yeah, the uh, straightness gets beaten back into me, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um Bit of a heavy question, or not yeah, a heavy question, but just a bit of a left field question here, bro. Yeah. Would you say you grew up traditionally Māori in Christchurch? Uh, yeah, so definitely not. Um, obviously, growing up in Auckland and going to Kohanga. Oh, you went to Kohanga uh, in Auckland? Yeah, so I went to Kohanga. Um, crack up story from Kohanga. Um, when I went there, uh, my mum would drop me off and she'd pick me up. How was today? What did you have for lunch? Oh, we had steak. She's like, what? Steak? Yeah, yeah, steak, we had steak. She's like, flash. Every day she'll pick me up. What was for lunch? Oh, steak, steak. <laughs> <coughs> and then she came in to get me one day as we were having lunch. And the uh, the fire comes in with this plate of um, mince on toast saying, hey kids, come get your steak. <laughs> uh, and yeah. Yeah, fire's onto it. Yeah, bro. And to this day, man, I love mints on mince, toast. Eh? Yeah. I love mints on toast. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, I went to Kohanga and then uh, I was in primary school for about a year and a half before we moved down here. And then when we moved down here, yeah, that was a, it was a bit of a culture shock. So yeah. um, my best friend was a ginger park here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they, I think in the whole, on the whole quarter of about 300 kids, uh, when it came to Te Reo Māori, we all got put in a classroom on a Friday. Um, and I think it was about six of us, and that's Shit. where we did our Te Reo. Was this a Kashmir? Um, no, so the, the primary school was called Beckenham. Oh, Beckenham, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, yeah, growing up, I grew up a little bit sour about that, you know, a little yeah. bit of segregation going on, but um, I think I look back on it now, and I'm like, man, that kind of rescued my, my deal, so to speak. Um, not nice. that it's great, but uh, sort of meant that we got concentrated teaching, yep. you know, and you know, to a kind of Tainer style, yeah, of having the older kids in with the younger kids. So, 
So there's only six of you going from the year nine right through the year 13? Yeah, bro. So, yeah, coming from a, a kohanga sort of yeah. flavoured education, going into that, um, yeah, it was... Uh, and then the Māori kid bringing the game of kiss and catch down south. I don't know if that was appreciated in the Pākehā school either, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, but always to kapahaka, that's, that's one thing that I'll... Um, that I'll really push for 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 the state schools. They love their kapaha, uh, kapahaka. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, always at the front uh, when it comes to haka time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so not traditionally Māori. We'd obviously we'd go back for tangi and unveilings and Fano reunions and things like that. But, back to um, Auckland. Uh, yeah, or to the Bay of Islands, oh, Bay where, Islands. My, where, where my, my biological dad's from, yep. um, uh, Rafati, uh, up near Urupukapuka Island, oh, yeah. um, Hole in the Rock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, oh, up there. Rako mm. Manga Manga, yeah. That's a um, flash place, bro. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't well, say that the, if you The Hole to... in the Rock is anyway, you know, when you go oh, out there. yeah, the Hole in the Rock is, but yeah, I think we've just sealed the road, um... To the house, yep. uh, to the houses where all my aunties and uncles' houses are, yeah, uh, or up to the mud eye. So, I suppose you could say it's getting flash. I'm pretty sure there's a fella up there, um, Safano up there. It's getting gentrified hard out. Oh, you know. okay. Um, but the New Zealand Herald Fano, you know, they've got a big flash house up there that overlooks our Utapa. Wow. Um, no driveway, yep. helicopter pad only. You know that sort of yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, oh, it's a, it certainly is a paradise up there, bro. Oh, bro, it's um, amazing. Yeah, but, it, it, yeah, living's, living's hard too, bro. It's the same on yeah. the East Coast, you know. It's a paradise up there, but, you know, it's pretty Yeah, once you're there, you're fine, right? Yeah. But it's getting to and from, that's the yeah. that's the struggle. Yeah. Um, but also, I don't know, I kind of don't want it to change. No, nah, you don't. You know. Uh, you don't, bro. Yeah. The easier it gets to 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 access, yeah, more the other more people are going to come in. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and um, and so are you are you Maori only through your dad's side, or is your mum Maori as well? So yeah, so my uh, it's all talk with mama, so she's the Ngati Fatu or what oh, okay. um side. So my fucker papa along that line, direct lineage to Apihai to Kawo, uh, who was the um, Ngāti Whātua, uh chief that signed the treaty, the treaty, and um, gave away all of Auckland Central to um, to William Hobson, um, and you know, on the on the face of things, you sort of look at that and get a little bit fucking about it, but um, then no, when you talk, it, when you time. think about it in the context of the time, you know, yeah. our people were dying of. Yeah. Of, of diseases and whatnot and we needed yeah. to make a partnership plus you know uh what would end up being the fafai between Ngāpui and and Ngāti Whātua uh we wanted all the boats that were going up north to do trade we wanted them to come to Auckland so yeah um best way of doing that is to make strategic alliances um so yeah so he's uh he's my grandfather's great-grandfather oh so, yeah um grandfather no, my my great grandfather's great grandfather. Yep. So that's my that that's my mum's line. Um and then my dad's line uh is yeah, Ngapui, Ngati uh Patukeha, um, Ngati Kuta all around that uh that central Ngāpui line. Nui so, tonu. Yeah. yeah, bro. Another one down in Queenstown, eh? <laughs> Yeah, well, if it's not Ngāpui's and Ngāti Pūrō, uh, a lot of tūhoi down here as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there's a, there's a sprinkling of all of us, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah. 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 But, um, um, oh, that's that's wicked, bro. So yeah. did you, growing up in Christchurch, mm. going to school, because um, I lived in Christchurch for about mm. eight, nine years, starting in around 1990, 91, and oh, yeah, uh, it yep. was yeah. Um, we moved in ninety one. Yeah. yeah, and it was. I, I had some interesting experiences there, bro. And yeah, because bro. I was a young fella, I loved it. Like I loved Otaru. Yeah, you know, yep. uh, all all that kind of stuff that went on. So in, with you, 
Did you face a lot of uh, either casual racism or just straight out, uh, you know, direct yeah, yeah. direct attack? Oh, definitely. Like, um, especially when I first arrived, you know, young kids, they they know all the choice insults. So, um, yeah, getting called the same colour as, as, as poo, yeah. you know, and... Um, do your family sleep on the floor and, uh, yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff. But, um, uh, and it's nothing to be sort of brushed aside, but I mean, I think it, it honestly, it shapes, it shapes you as kids and it's, it's half the, half the reason of why you're as resilient as you are at a real young age is because you're exposed to that. Yeah. And, um, look, bro, I'd like to think that, that, We've come a long way, yeah. In a many in many aspects, we have, yeah. Um, and I'm talking about my old Tahi uh, Fano. Christchurch is a completely different place now. Like, yeah, yeah. It's you know the, the there's a lot of support. There's way more support for Kopapa Māori there. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the Kura Kopapa uh, in the Kura Reo they're oversubscribed. They've got yeah. massive waiting lists. Yeah, and you know I've got a bro that teaches that one. Um, and you know, on the face of them, as a as a parent of a of a little uh, Maori girl at a state school, I get really hoha with the kura deal because they're stealing all the they're stealing all the Maori kaiko. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, as well, you know, they're only going to get more and more popular. You know, and so it's yeah, I sort of get frustrated with them, but they're filling a gap because. Um, Yep. The, the the training the the real teachers the of the next ten twenty yeah, years, right. you know, um, and they're like the um, what is it Te Kura Kaupapa Māori or Te Whanau Tahi, They do this. I don't know if it's the same at all, um, Kura Kaupapa, But if you are in year thirteen and you don't quite know what you're going to do with your life, you know, you haven't signed up to university, probably don't have enough money to go on an OE that sort of stuff, um, you can enrol as a kura kaupapa teacher in the, in the training and they'll hire you back as a teacher aide yeah, in the right. school. So I think they've got, I think they've got about four or five of, of my bros that are, that are going through their last year of, of real teaching um, training whilst working at the Kura as a teacher aide. Oh, wow, really? And then next year they can go out and <laughs> apply for jobs as teachers. You oh, know? wow. So, um, and I'm pretty sure they've got a guaranteed job at the Kura itself if they want it. So you've um, spent a bit of time at uh, Te Kura Kaupapa or Te Whanau Tahi? Well, I've just got a good mate there. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, play a bit of sport with and... He's the the real Māori teacher there. Oh, okay. And I've met a couple of the fellas through. So I play disc golf, and yeah, it's quite a popular sport for Māori mm. and and Ōtei Tahi. Who's uh, who's your, who's your mate at uh, Te Fano Tahi? Oh, te, uh, te Hohota Kama, Kamariera. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, Corey uh, was his name. Oh. Corey Kamariera. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to call him Corey actually, but um, I've heard. I've heard mm. about this guy many times actually because yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. obviously he's got the same name as me so yeah, I'm yeah, like yeah. oh that's an interesting name so it's easy to remember and recall yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, I'm, I'm actually going to a Nohumurai there next month oh yeah right yeah, yeah, I've yeah, actually nice. got two Nohumurai coming up in the next two months there yeah mm. yeah, yeah yeah so um, no, it's a good school bro yep. um, and it's a school that came up when I was at high school so I went to Kashmir High yeah um, yeah it's a school that came up when I was there and they were just around the corner from us at Kashmir. Yeah, right. And oh, the rumour was that they were all PD kids, you know. Oh, really? Or, or, or home detention kids or um, juvie kids. Uh, and the only time we'd see them would be at Manu Kōrero. Yeah. Um, and they'd smash it. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, we would never see them. So Kashmir... So I entered Manu Kōrero at the at the English speaking level. Yeah, right. right. Um, and there would never be any Tafano Tahi in the English speaking competition. They would all be in the in the yeah, Kopapa Māori, you yeah. know. Um, 
but yeah, but now the Tefano Tahis have got a they've got a rugby team with the Kashmir High. So Oh yeah, do they? So I'm um, playing the first fifteen comp with Kashmir as a joint team. So Oh it's a joint team. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um yeah, so there's well, a lot boys more. Are pretty good, bro, even for a small cutter. I know oh, I I've, yeah. I know of a few of them they they uh do Modako yeah, you yeah. know, with Aaron and um I well, don't know really if it's good. um they're, they're going through their sort of rebuild because I mean their numbers are going through the roof but um they've got this uh, when I went in there my last uh, my last job when I was living in uh, Christchurch um they had plans and designs to build a a Kopapa Maori tech room oh, yeah. so this massive classroom where at, you at could, Kashmir no at the Tafano Tahi oh, yeah. campus yeah um. It was like this massive room where on one one side could be divided into four, but you had a big um, thing to boil haraki here, um, to drain uh, to drain the blood of animals, you know, hang them up and drain them and things yep. like that. A uh, weaving room, a carving room, yeah, right. Um, a smoking room, yeah, you know, things like that. Um, so man, if that comes, it'll be the first of its kind in New Zealand. Yeah, right. But if it, that comes through, man, that'd be incredible. And you know, like, I don't really care what the mainstream education system thinks of that. No. You know, Ministry of Education shouldn't have an, have any say in how we teach traditional. Oh, hundred uh, percent. Eh? You know, that was I think that was the big roadblock at the time. Yeah, I'd be. Is the Pakeha architects couldn't understand why we would why why Maori would want to yeah. need a uh, a cesspit for yeah. for blood. You yeah. know, like um, why do we need a big pot to boil haraki? Like, <laughs> yeah. they're just you know these these questions have never come across their yeah. desk before, and so it just goes to show, bro, the need in the future we're going to have for. Māori architects for, um, you know, to, to have that mātauranga passed across mainstream yeah. mahi, you know? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm not sure if you've seen the, um, the news reports lately, bro, but mm. uh, apparently the highest achievement group for NCEA, mm. I think it was for last year, was uh, Kura Kaupapa Māori. Yeah. Yeah. And and they're just smashing it, bro. The NCAA yeah. results are higher, much higher than any any other um, uh, kura auraki. What do you think? The, the I've got my fakado on it, but what do you think the reasoning behind it is? Well, because we're encouraged, Maori are encouraged to learn in a Maori way. <coughs> you know, yeah. like like sitting down at a desk and getting scolded with a ruler mm. is not the Maori way to yeah. learn. You know, so. Uh, you know, I, I just think we're finally encouraging our children to learn through methods that have always worked for us. Yeah, bro. And, um, and then we thrive when we're in those environments, eh, hey, you know? A hundred percent. And I think fundamentally for me, it comes down to the whānau aspect of it. Yeah. You know, when when you're not leaving, when you when a kid leaves home to go to school, they're not going into a whānau environment. They're going to... The equivalent of what is a teenager's job, you know, that's how yeah. they see it. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, leaving yeah. home to go and learn and blah, 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 blah. But if you're leaving home to go and be with more Fano and learn with others, and then you just put in that natural Māori instinct to be competitive with your <laughs> peers, you know, yeah. and test each other and have good banter and, yeah. you know, and compete, yeah. you know, day in, day out. That's what we're doing against each other, yeah. right? But in good faith, you yeah. know, in, in good jest and, and whatnot. But um, I think the world is slowly... I mean, this is my reflection. The world is slowly waking... Uh, the Western world slowly waking up to it. Yeah. Because otherwise you wouldn't see this thing around hot desks yeah. and offices and open plan and yeah. things like that. Yeah. You know, like yeah, that's closer to the way that we operate. Oh, eh? hundred you know? percent. This is this is our desk, not your mm. desk. Mm. You mm. know, um, that's right. This is our our shared office space, not your office space. You know, you oh. need to be you need to be wary of booking this meeting room because it's not your office; it's everyone's office. Oh, bro, I love know? that. I, I mm. never th I never actually stopped to think yeah. that a hot desk is a this is our desk, this is not your desk. Yeah, bro. It was actually a Pākehā lady that um, taught me that 
I don't know if this is the right way to say it, but anthropologically in the world, so through the study of anthropology in the world, this one fellow, don't even ask me what his name is, came up with this theory that there are two cultures in the world. So there's culture A and culture B is what he called them. Yeah. And so culture A is represented by the Indo-Pacific peoples. So Southeast Asia, all the way through Indonesia, all the way through the Pacific, and then up around the central top of the South Americas. Yeah. And the style of that culture is that everyone works together for the betterment of everyone. Um, you know, it takes a village to raise a child, that sort of thing, right? So yep. society is built on this whole, um, whatever you do, you do it for the benefit of, of everyone, right? Ko yep. Um Whereas culture B, which is the um, Anglo-European culture, who have throughout history lived very, in very close proximity to each other um, and often fought over resources, uh, uh, are naturally forced into what he labelled as the shark um, mentality, which is a shark will raise a pup for a certain amount of time and then once it gets to this age, you're on your own. Yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. their focus and their importance level is on building resilience into their people so that they can go off and make their own fortune so to speak so that's where the and when you look at the cultures there that's where the quarter acre section yeah, with right. fences and gates and you know this is my land and my piece of the park well there's nothing wrong with that it's just a different for right yeah and so but nowadays very rarely do you see large organisations with assigned desks yeah. and assigned offices mm. to the rangatira differently, right? Because mm. yeah, they yeah, need yeah. to have private conversations and yep. things like that. Um, but for the general working class, like me and you, bro, I'll put us in that. You know, I'll put us. <laughs> you in can that. put me in that any day, bro. Yeah. Um, you know, we're we're sort of you know we're told to we're the bumholes of the office. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ko tahi tanga, bro. Ko Ma- tahi tanga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mahi tahi. Uh, yeah. yeah, but no, that uh, yeah, that that's a cool reflection, bro. And um, now because you've already kind of we've already sort of segued into mm. it a little bit. Um, I'd be interested to hear your 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 mahi journey. So yeah, bro. so um. You know how you ended up in the in the types of positions you're in now. I understand yeah. that you come from uh, a health and safety background. Uh, yeah, mainly. Yep. 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 So how did you end up in that that space? Real random, bro. Like I, um, out of school, I yeah, I, I had my my journey of I wanted to be a professional athlete of some form, but never any good. So. Um, did my hospital journey, you know. Um, I was, I was quite popular for being the guy who, um, so when I was working in hospital, I would always volunteer to be the first off. Oh, yeah? Yep, um, because throughout my shift, I'd be, I'd be taking count of how many staff had left, because in hospital, well, back then, every staff member was entitled to one free drink oh, okay. after their shift, and so I would take count of all the staff that had left, Without taking their drink. Oh, you were onto it, bro. Yeah, and then I'd volunteer to be first off. see where the story's off. going. Yep. <laughs> and then I'd just take all their free drinks. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, yeah, Arne was, uh, was, was the thing. Oh, Arne is, uh, he worked from 12 until 2 and then drank from 2 until 12. Uh, was me. So that was my early education, uh, uh, work career. Um, Not much different to mine, bro. Yeah, yeah. Then uh, the the earthquakes happened. Tried tried and failed a bit at university. Um, was real good at Te because I pretended that I didn't know how to speak. Oh, okay. uh, at Canterbury University, it took them three years to realise. Um, after getting A pluses for year one and two, that maybe I was lying about my <laughs> level of deal. But um, the stupid thing they did is they gave the same credits for beginner Te Reo Māori as they did for intermediate and advanced. Really? So didn't have like a why would I, system. Yeah, why would I why would I go for advanced yeah. and struggle to get a, a yeah. you know, a C a pass, yeah. Um so yeah, pretty pretty lazy through uni, so didn't do anything there. 
Um, tried to become a teacher. I tried and failed a lot of things, bro, to awesome, be honest. Bro. The best um, way to roll. Yeah, yeah. You best, soon find out what you're good at. Oh, 100%. Know? Probably the best the best thing that happened to me was um, uh, I went over, I, I met a, I met a, a, a wahine, uh, and then a, and a month later I'd already committed to going to live with my sister in Darwin. Oh, um, wow. And so I met this wahine, she was just out of a relationship, uh, come to the bar that I was working at to, um, to, to you know, sort of, spread her single wings so to speak <laughs> uh, and and this Māori sort of caught her and gave her a message about how I was a really good listener and uh, you know um, if she ever wanted to uh, an ear to chew off or, or what not then I'm her guy um, yeah, and so Ooh, that's a long rebound bro yeah 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 <laughs> so uh, anyway moved to Aussie then within a month I was convinced that she was the one so I was coming back came Sweet. back went on the dole uh, and lived with her you know um, many a journey of many Māori uh, tāne uh, yeah. but Man, the best thing that happened to me bro was the Christchurch earthquakes to be honest and that's a really sad thing to say but what that meant was the that unskilled oh. unqualified Māori could go and earn a decent wage um, what because of all the new, uh, yeah, all, all the all the, all the new rebuild. construction work that yeah, come into town. Yeah, so I got a job. Um, I used to drive a little um, remote control uh, camera down all the sewage pipes to check right. for cracks and things like that. Yeah. Um, and because it was, you know, it was literally you're working with shit, so to speak. <laughs> um, uh, it paid pretty well. So yep. I think that was my realisation was all the jobs that I'd gone for, I never appreciated because I felt like I was, you know, I don't know, maybe it was a sense of entitlement. I'm yep. over the, I'm, I'm better than this, so to speak. So yep. uh, paid really well, juggled a few jobs in the rebuild and slowly got into health and safety through traffic management um, because I'm quite a process thinker, like, sort of oh well if you put a cone in a car's way a car's gonna stop you know pretty easy and i think you can you can associate that with thinking yeah um so did a whole bunch of courses in health and safety tried for years to get into work safe really uh tried and failed three times um and then lucked out i was living in wellington at the time we decided that we couldn't um afford to buy a house in wellington so um, I applied for for the job in, in Christchurch and got it with WorkSafe. So I became a health and safety inspector for them. I uh, started my training there and I noticed I was one of two brown faces in a, in a staff of about 80 in yep. a central government role. At the time, this was a, um, a Labour majority government, um, you know, just pre-COVID. <coughs> and... Uh, there were heaps of advantages for being brown in, in a non-brown office. Yeah. Um, Who was the other brown guy? Uh, so it was a brown wahine and, um, yeah, just didn't really connect with Te Ao Māori. You oh, know, okay. like a lot of us brown people yeah, in the South, nah, we just connect and we very, don't go very back. very common story, bro. Yep. Um, and so that meant that I was the loudest <laughs> and the proudest of a, of a very small pool. And the Māori dōpū at um, WorkSafe were recruiting. And so they told me to apply, and man, I'd had my 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 sight set on being this health and safety police officer for you know for the last ten years. So I was like, oh, nah, no thanks, but no thanks. Maybe in a couple of years, you know. And I was I was a relatively disconnected Marty at the time, um, but then uh, I made the mistake during the interview um, of leaving uh, the speakers on. I was working from home at the time because it was, you know, we're still in COVID times. And the manager told me the salary out loud and my wife was on the other side of the room. And she jumped the couch, ran over, <laughs> he'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I found my way into a Māori rōpū within a central government thing and we were... Yeah, it was, it was 20 of us strong across the motu, um, and I, I did my first noho at 
38 years old since I was from since I was six. Wow. Uh, so long time, um, eh? Yeah, it was a very quick and passionate uh, return to Te Ao Māori um, and worked there for, for two years. And then, uh, yeah, so, but I mean, to, to give a little bit of background on the on the kaupapa or the work, you know, the same inequity that exists for Māori and health and education and justice, or the same thing um, exists for health and safety, where we're relatively... Um, Overrepresented in statistics, are we? Yeah, bro. And uh, so I used to go and visit... Um, Iwi and Runaka up in Christchurch and sort of asked the question, well, what do you think? And this one co-master turns around to me and goes, it's Maui's fault. I was like, what? Yeah, I get that. Uh, he I goes, that. it's Maui's fault. And he said, all, all you kids have grown up on TV shows. He said, our TV shows were legends of this fella, yeah, Maui Tiki Tiki. Who was this mischief, the mischief whore, fellow, yeah. whore fellow that would just go around and take risks and believe that he was the man and he was impenetrable? So he said, in our culture, every male strives to be him because mm, yeah. he's the man, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so he said, therein lies the the issue with Maori mm. men. We're just mm. way too confident mm. for our skill set. Yeah. And then I thought back to my um. My work career, bro, and you know how I always thought I was better than the money I was getting paid for, <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh, you're making a lot of sense here." Um, so I did that, mahi, bro, um, trying to bring down the inequity uh, of health and safety stats, but rather than focus on Maori being the issue, we tried to um, deliver a message of Te Ao Maori being the the waka in which we can get back to equitable outcomes yeah um so we did a lot of um wānanga on marae so um kaupapa māori uh focus on te whare tapa whai and well-being and and looking at how um a balanced hauora can bring better outcomes for the workplace and for your whānau so yep um <clears throat> That allowed me to get into the depths of how amazing te ao Māori and tikanga Māori can be. Um, so I'd say that my reo is pretty low. Um, but my ability to join the dots and compare between te ao Pākehā and te ao Māori, I know I can really clearly see, oh, that's the same as that. Yeah, It's just worded different, you know. And so I started creating this kaupapa of how walking, uh, an inspector at WorkSafe walking onto a job site is like the same as a manuhiri visiting a marae for, for a pōhiri, you know, so you should always wait outside the gate at a job site, you know, you don't know what you're walking into. Yep. Well, it's the same kaupapa for Māori when, you, when, you, when you're when you a manuhiri, you know, and then the job, the site foreman comes out, and he'll call you on. You know, uh, same thing as a karanga. I mean, I'm somewhat bastardising te ao Māori here, but no, you know, no, I'm trying no, no, to draw, it, draw uh, connections. The equivocations, it's all good. And then yeah. you walk onto the site and he'll start giving you a bit of a breakdown on what the hazards are and what you need to be aware of and what the kaupapa of the work is and that sort of stuff. Well, it's the same thing as a whai kōrero, you know. That's that's our hokainga telling us how we can keep ourselves safe. Yeah. Uh, in the area and when I started doing these sort of joining the docs um, frameworks it started clicking to me that I was actually pretty good at it like saying hey this isn't actually too much of a stretch for us to be able to adapt our our processes and I even went as far to change it processes into tikanga um, and to develop our policy or our kawa to match te ao Māori, all you need to be told is is how it works. Yep. So that was man, I love doing that mahi and um, but we are not. The blue, yellow, and black wave comes rolling into um, 
to the potential new government and central government starts getting really uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they started taking away a lot of our noho marae and our wānanga, started bringing in um, a lot more KPIs around um, return, on, return on investment and things mm. like that. And all of a sudden, the Māori, the Māori-ness of the work started going away. So um, my wife was away for work uh, one week and I saw this role come up with QLDC. And I sent her a message just saying, lol, should we move to Queenstown? <laughs> and she goes, absolutely not. But give it a go anyway. Um, and so I put in an application for this role, which was a strategic advisor Māori, and went, oh, I was not going to, you know, it's just, just like a dial a Māori role, you know. Yeah, it's not yeah gonna, I mean, I, yeah, I get that's, yeah. that's what, it, what it would appear to be, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I sent it in, I didn't hear back for three months. Um, oh, wow, did, yeah, they, did so, you apply three months earlier? Yeah, uh, yeah so the role closed, but... <coughs> what they wanted, um, what I've learnt about now, um, is they wanted uh, mana whenua to be on the interview panel. Yeah. Um, and so, so the, the the role that I'm talking about that came about as one of those organisational reviews to you know find out where the organisation's got strengths and weaknesses and things like that. So that that review it came up that they needed. Um, uh, a competent Māori strategic relationship manager. Yeah. Um, and apparently you turned them down, bro, so... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, like, there was no guarantee I was even going to get a look. And she she mm. just asked me to apply, bro. Mm. And I, I thought, oh, you just need some numbers to, to, yeah. to put on this uh, thing. But <laughs> it didn't seem like me anyway. I'm not really yeah, that... Like, I, can I don't have your Now that I set, know bro. you, uh, yeah. That, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, I, I um, they rang me up a couple of months later, finally got an interview panel together and called me in for a, a, an interview. And I didn't tell my wife I was interviewing. I just, um, yeah, I just uh, did the old Zoom interview, you know, shirt and tie on the top, <laughs> uh, pajama, pajama pants, pants on, on the, the bottom. bottom. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, looked pretty good. And um, yeah, I was pretty out of it because the, the interview was only supposed to go for about 40 minutes and it went for two hours. So I uh, got off at the end of it. That's good. Yeah, that, that's yeah. a good indicator, eh? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, they were open and honest with me. Um, um, my boss was. Um, well, now boss. You know, uh, why do you want to apply? And you know, you know, Uncomfortability around central government and things like that. And you know, very open and honest about how expensive it is to live here. And, yeah. You know, whilst they'd support the role, it's a significant change and, and whatnot. So, yeah, I went away and just rang the wife and just said, hypothetically, how much would I need to be paid per year to, to move to Queenstown? And, um, yeah, she gave me a number and I got a ring back a couple of days later with the offer and, you know, we managed to be able to make the numbers work after cool. a bit of toing and froing. I think potentially that was helped by the fact that it was during that big, uh, the big wet down here. Um, you know, the big rainstorm. Oh, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, that, that caused the slips and things like that. So yeah, it was a big state right. of emergency down here. So that's right. I think they were like desperate to get someone in. Yeah. And they were too busy doing other things. So, you yeah. know, so I'd like to say that I give you know i give my money my money's worth back but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah we managed to make the, the dollars work and commuted backwards and forwards until christmas and then moved down in january so Sweet. here I am. yeah yeah um it was good to have you on board bro yeah, and bro, um it, it was great to to meet you as well mm. um yeah, I, I don't know if you remember, but uh, it was my cousin that put put me on to yeah, you, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah the cousin Joe. Yep. Yeah. So um, that was cool, actually, because... Uh, that's uh, Māori, though, right? Yeah, oh, no, that's that, so Māori, bro. That, that, that is so Māori. That is so Māori, because when you contacted me, um, mm. I, I think you contacted me... And I, 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 I like Joe had already already told me about you. Yeah, yeah. So when when you contacted me, I'm like, I already know who you are, bro. Yeah, my yeah, my yeah. cousin told me told me all about you. Yeah. Well, I remember my fucker too when I came down for the mm. for day one, and yeah. we went out for 
for breakfast beforehand. Yeah. A little coffee, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was just good, bro, because I came down by myself. You know, we weren't quite ready to, to bring the wife down. And, yeah. Yeah. Ending, ending up coming into this fucker too with about 50 people. Yeah, yeah, that's right, bro. I'm the only person sitting on the <laughs> other side, you know. Oh, you um, know what's funny, bro? Everyone that was there, they were way ne- more nervous than you were. Oh, Cause, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, at, at council, we don't have fucker toe, we don't have porphyry. Not, not often, not yet. anyway. Not yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, so they, they didn't know where to stand, who to stare at, you know, what to say, you yeah. know, where to look. They were doing all that, all that brand new stuff, bro. Yeah, it was bro. a crack up, eh? But, um, yeah. No, it was so good to have you come in. And, yeah, uh, yeah, we've caught up a few times already, you know. Yeah, bro. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, so my, my role now with, with Jack actually, was I've, I've realised that it can't just be an advisory role. Mm. So there has to be some sort of layer of management on top of that. I don't manage people, but uh, I need to manage the the direction of our our, our waka, our ship, or yep. our fleet. You know, yep. but you you um, got a lot on your shoulders, bro. You know, as being yeah. the the person who has to make those decisions internally, it's a big big role. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty. I've got I've got good people around me though. So I suppose Thanks, bro. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got good people. That's <laughs> yeah. What are you doing for lunch today? Come have a have lunch. <laughs> you want yeah. to have a lunch, ketchup, bro? Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, I've got an agenda of items I'd like <laughs> us to discuss <laughs> whilst at this casual mm. lunch. Um, yeah, bro. But I mean, we've got good leadership. Like, I've got I've got a huge amount of respect for uh, our mayor Glenn and yep. his um, his Maori uh, rediscovery and journey. Yeah, you know. Oh, well, he's one of your Ngāpuhi uh, brethren, bro. Yeah, bro. Or, or yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, was it Ngāti Ho, Ngāti Wai? So, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, and he's, you know, I, I I was privileged to go down to Waitangi with him and, and our CE, and, man, I couldn't have been prouder for the, you know, the way that they, they held themselves at yeah. Waitangi and awesome. at, at Te Ropu Taiao and, and things like that. And, yeah, yeah bro, so uh, we're, in, we're facing in the right direction, yeah. I think. I think yeah. we just need to work out how to start paddling. And um, what what do you what do you see as your most important uh, the, the the most important thing that you're working on currently within your role? Yeah, as an, I mean, so, <laughs> so many, many different things. Yeah. But um, uh, I think the general consensus uh, across the board, and I mean this in the most respectful way, is that um, uh, we we one we don't know how many Maori are in this area. Well, we have a rough idea. Um, me yeah, and no, uh, me and Mike, there we have our, we've put our heads together and we think we've come up with a number, <laughs> um, but we, regardless of whether there's one or a hundred thousand Maori in the in the in the in this row here, uh, we are in Aotearoa, made to wait Yeah. Um, and so we need to uh, apply yeah. some sort of te ao Māori-ness to this area. Yep. And so we've got a community of Māori that are, are potentially underserviced uh, and underserved. Definitely. And and in the, in, the, in the opposite side to that are potentially underserving. You know, we've got a lot of Māori out there that could be providing, you know, the whole uh, area, this massive, um, <coughs> you know, the treasures and skills that we bring. Yeah, and so it's unfair on the Māori community, and it's unfair on the on the wider community that we hold that resource back, and we don't allow a place and space for us to to be be at our best, so yep. to speak. So, if we're to look, you know, you look at that at a high level, and how do we create something that Māori are, are, are proud to stand up and be who we are in this in this town. Um, yep. or in these towns um, and how do we yeah how do we bring uh, a more culturally safe uh, and a bigger flavor Maori flavor to this raw here and yeah as Matai waka myself you know how do we or how do I become a soldier for Kaitahu you know how do I how do I Everything I do, I do as tangata whenua on behalf of 
you know, not on behalf of, but you know, I'll never bring a Ngāti Whātua flavour to this law here, you know, or a Ngāpū flavour. It's all about I want my daughter to grow up here and and understand the Kaitahu history. Um, uh, sorry, me kāti māmoi, me waitaha. <laughs> I don't <want> mate. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I've got this, I suppose, this wee tightrope path that I'm walking at the moment in which my personal life, I want to have a township that, that my daughter feels safe speaking Māori, learning Māori, being Māori. Um, so how do I, as a, as a, as a Crown representative assist um, our treaty partners in, in the Seven Papatipu Dunaka and allowing them to take their place at the table in this area? Yeah, I mean, you do have a tough job, bro, mm. because, you know, people think that it's a Māori-focused role, and mm. I guess it's Māori kaupapa-focused, for yeah. sure, yeah. but a large part of what you have to do is bring the peoples together, right? It, it, yeah. It, it's, it's about... Um, you know, and the, one of the hardest things you can do is is um, is forge a path pathway for non Maori to walk. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. And that I think, I mean, I'm a massive believer that, and maybe I'm I'm glass half full type thinker, but everyone that I've met in this area is just they're just keen to know. You know, um, they have their preconceived theories about you know oh, the history sure. and, and all that sort of stuff me too before i go here me too. oh yeah definitely yeah. but you know um it was actually a pakeha, a pakeha fellow that told me he said te ao maori and te ao pakeha are, are separated by a river the two worlds separated by a river and over that river there's a bridge and now actually there's quite a few bridges you know maori have been crossing that bridge over into te ao pakeha since the start of colonization right and don't get me wrong, I'm relatively happy with my colonisation. Uh, I like my, my creature comforts. Um, so I'm, I'm a champion of the Pākehā people and, and what they've brought to my world. Um, Just to clarify though, bro, yeah. everyone thinks that only Caucasians have invented everything in the yeah, world. Yeah, 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 but yeah. that's just, you know, like we share the fruits of, of all the inventions from all cultures. You know? Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, what I mean, like, I, I haven't, as you know, alluding to earlier, I didn't really grow up in a kaupapa Māori way and I've created a set of comforts that, you know, I'm quite used to. Yeah, me too, bro. So I don't eat kai moana. Um <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't eat quite. Oh, well, the thing is, is that I don't. It's not that I don't like it. It's that other people enjoy it way more than I do. <laughs> and so you're um, just trying to help out, bro. <laughs> yeah, you should see when we go back to Tangi. Me and my sister's the same. Yeah. Uh, people leave us alone until it comes time to um, for the um, for the feast the afterwards. Uh, the feast afterwards. <laughs> Because you know how at, at um, Hakadi, uh, there's always raw fish on the table, yeah, yeah, and there's a little cut fever on yeah. it. Well, all of a sudden, we're the most popular people in the room, yeah, because everyone, cause everyone yeah. wants my raw fish. <laughs> but yeah, so I can't, I can't, I don't eat kaimoana. I can't play the guitar. I've tried <gasps> so hard, man. I've tried so hard. I can belt out the first few chords of um, Redemption song. Yeah, <laughs> can't. But uh, yeah, that's. The picking. Ding, in, ding, ding, my, ding. Uh, in my head, I'm an artist. Yeah. Right? In my head, and this goes back to me thinking that I get paid way less than what I'm worth. Yeah. Because so, in my head, I'm the best at everything. But awesome. what comes out of my hands is just Not terrible. Quite the same. Yeah, there's a disconnect somewhere. <laughs> um, no, nah, that's okay, yeah. bro. Look, there's a role for all of us in Te Ao Māori, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just like how. Not everyone's a kapahaka fella, not everyone's a maurako fella, not yeah. everyone's a waiata fella, but we find our place within the Māori world. We find our place, yeah. yeah. So anyway, this follows corridors, the two worlds, you know, Māori been coming across to one world. Yeah. Slowly but surely, we're getting more and more Pākehā, you know, hence the fact, open plan offices, hot yeah. desks, things like that, yeah. that, are, that are on the bridge. And there's curiosity and there's thirst to learn more about te ao Māori and Māori culture, but they just don't know how to take that step off. Yeah. 
there's a massive worry of creating offense. Yeah, oh yeah, um, for sure. There's a massive worry about getting it wrong, because in the in the hierarchy of 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 Western thought, offending someone is one of the worst things that you can do in life. You know, it, and, it's it, it's not unique to that culture, bro. There's yeah. plenty of cultures that are like that, eh? Um, certainly not a Maori culture. We we yeah. we we tend to thrive on. Uh, I'll call it debate. I'm not going to yes. call it conflict. Wānanga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, wānanga. Yeah. We, we sometimes we just have to talk about it, warts and all. To yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So, yeah. and that's where I suppose you know my job is is how do I help people feel a little bit more comfortable making mistakes? Yeah. Um, so, you know. So what, what's your what's your number one rec- uh, recommendation for uh, as a, as a pathway? To, for non Māori at taking that first step, what would you what would you? I think people need to be aware of what their learning styles are. I suppose, like how they're going. You need to be aware of how you're going to react if you do make something wrong, mm-hmm. and then you need to get comfortable with the fact that you know, could also to our Māori, we're going to drown. Right, you need to drown and you need to make mistakes in order to learn. Um, it's, it's you know, I think they call that yeah. experiential learning. That's you a know. that's a lesson for all of us, bro. Even yeah. Maori, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. So, just give it a go. You know, I mean, that sounds like such a generic um, answer, but also there's a lot of background stuff that you need to understand. You know, we had that quoted all before we start. You know, just because you hear a story doesn't mean it's the story. Yeah, the only story. Um, mm. You know, one of the coolest things about our culture and our history. But one of the most dangerous things is that we didn't write anything down. We didn't have a written language. And so, you know, Mokoroa told us a lot of stories when we were younger. And me and my sister, my, my most, you know, the closest to me in age, you know, we would have sat down and listened to the exact same corridor and she tells the story different to what I tell the story. Yeah. And that's just natural, mm. right? It's yep. Chinese whispers, you know, that sort of same level yep. thinking. Or and even so, even your focus, you know, you might focus on one part of the story, mm. so you focus on the detail of that story and you mm. skip over the detail of another part, yeah. whereas they'll focus on some other part. So you both may not ex- may not be different that much. It's just yeah. you've got to focus on different um, aspects of the story, you know? Yeah, and so, I mean, that, that's one thing that I've been, I've learned a lot about myself with regards to this area, you know, and the uniqueness that we have around Tahuna especially, and the seven shared interests from Papatapurunaka, and it was just simply put to me, you know, all of them, you know, Kaitahu being a nomadic uh, tribe, you know, coming over the hills and coming to this area, they all came from different directions. Mm. And so it's like looking at a painting from front on, and then taking three steps sideways and looking at the exact same painting, yeah. but seeing something different. Yeah. And that is, you, you can realize once you put yourself into that mm. mindset, you can understand the why, mm-hmm. you know, why certain Moanga have um, different levels of meaning mm. to different Runaka mm. because historically their people might have had to traverse that particular maunga mm. and it was bloody tough. Yeah. Whereas uh, Runaka from the complete opposite side of the island, they never needed to even get close to it yeah. in order to access this uh, in this area. Yeah. Um, but I find that fascinating, man. It's one of the things that's really gripped me as far as my return to Te Ao Māori in, in general is the diverseness of the corridor. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's probably going off straight as far as the Pākehā go, but Pākehā do want to know. Because, yeah, 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 yeah. So here's yeah. A, um, uh, another question I had for you, and I've lost my train of thought already, but mm. um, would you, you... You've only been here for a short time, right? Mm. Yeah, so... About yeah. six months Six months, five months. I think yeah. In the job, yeah. So... Um, is it safe to say you you already enjoy living here? Probably love it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's hard not to though, right? Like, yeah. Uh, we will never live in a more beautiful place oh, ever I in my life. agree with that, bro. Yeah. Totally agree um, with that. 
whilst I would say that uh, you know through as as just my history, bro. Like I genuinely believe that I am Ngahui Far. Like I am the essence of. You know, my daughter will tell me tell everyone that my biggest fear in life is having the same kai for dinner two nights in a row. <laughs> so I get very itchy if I'm in one place for too long. Yeah. Um, but this is the only place I've ever come to and just immediately connected with. Yeah. Purely by opening my curtains. Yeah. You know, and looking up. So we live in Hanley's, looking up at the oh, moonga yeah. up there. Get and to look at the moonga. It's, it's kind of scary, kind of intimidating. Yeah. You know, it's bloody scary that there's snow on the mountains in summer. I know. But, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> see, I, I get, like, from here where I'm sitting right now, I I can see Kawarau Maunga right now mm. out my window. Mm. It's just, you know, it, it's an amazing place to live, easy yeah. to, to love, like... I'm like you. I've always had itchy feet. It's through mm. my upbringing. When I was young, we moved all the time. Mm. Um, and uh, into my adulthood, I moved all the time. So, uh, But this is the longest I've ever stayed in one place my whole life. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, I've got, no, um, I've got no desires to, to, to move on from here. But I mean, I've been here for five months, you know. Yeah. And for me, it's it's not about me. It's about my, my wife, my daughter. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if, if it gets to the point, you know, my wife's a very homely lady. She's probably the opposite of me. Yeah. She likes being in one place. Yeah. You know, her, her whanau have always lived in Nelson. And, yeah. You know, the parents have been in the same job their entire lives. Yeah. And, you know, that's what the people are like up yeah. there. That scares the crap out of me. But, you yeah. know. Yeah, me too. In the end, yeah, she's it's not for everyone. Important. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and, um, uh, Yes, so we're we're close to wrapping up now, yeah, bro. bro. But um, yeah, I it's a, it's been an interesting chat about the whole thing actually from the top down. Mm. Everything we talked about, you've been, you've uh, brought up some stuff I didn't realize as well mm. about you and uh, and and through your through your upbringing as well. Mm. But um, yeah, like I've really really enjoyed our chat. I hope we can come back and then uh, have a catch up on. You know, maybe in a couple of years' time, like uh, uh, I hate this place. I can't wait to get out of it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. The old tune might talk change. about my uh, my massive Maori team that I have at council. Yeah, that's and, right. Yeah, that's yeah. right, bro. You might yeah. grow your little empire in yeah, the yeah. Uh, in in council, and uh, I'll be glad to come and join you in that yeah, empire right. at some Definitely. point, bro. But um, yeah, before before we wrap up, mm. I just got one quick fire question for you. Cool. Nothing's so, quick fire with Maori, bro. No, that's right. That's <laughs> right. It can get deep, bro. Yeah, it can yeah. get deep. But uh, yeah. So the question is this: If you could go back in time mm. and um, and give some advice to eighteen-year-old mm. Arn, uh, what advice would that be? Yeah, yeah. I've been thinking about that quarter door ever since you told me at the start. I'm going to ask you this. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's little bits of advice that I, I'd. I'd give him, like, um, you know, don't go home with that girl or, you know. Mo Mo Wa, bro. Yeah, yeah. She's like a waste of time, that one. Yeah, don't yeah, do yeah. it. Um, but inevitably, I think, like, all my little tries and fails have sort of sent me in the direction that, uh, that, um, that I'm in at the moment. So I'm really... I'm in the best place. I'm in the exact place that I want to be in. Supposed you know? to be. Yeah. I've got a beautiful family. We live in a beautiful place. I've got an amazing job, and I'm doing mahi that I feel like is is making it count. But um, I suppose if I was to generically look back at myself as a young Māori male uh, that was relatively disconnected from Te Ao Māori, is don't be afraid to go home. Uh, if you are struggling with your Māori journey, and this was the one thing that reconnected me um, when I joined my Māori rōpū, was um, you, you you can never start on your journey until you go back home. So that's what I did. Went back up to, to Tamaki and and reconnected with um, Maunga Kia Kia and no. uh, the different landmarks around um, Ngāti was sort of uh, you know, Takiwa. Yep. Um, went down to the Udupa and, and saw where my my nan and my pops and 
and all the the connective whānau and and sort of got taken through the the connection of the gravestones you know that family with that family and that family with that family and once you tie all those dots down together it's yeah so the advice the advice would be alcohol is not all it's cracked up to be (laughs) and um don't be afraid to go home yeah Yeah. awesome brother um so a lead lead on question follow on question um which is actually a question i wanted to ask you earlier so do you do you ever think at some point um whether it be because you have a chance to offer offer something Mm. um would would you you ever can would you ever see yourself going back to either your ngāpuhi or your ngāti whātū or takiwā to live and to, um, well, yeah. just to move back there at any yeah. stage. Yeah. So it's the one caveat I've got in my marriage with my wife is the only excuse for us to ever live in Auckland is if Iwi call me back to work. Uh, so that's the, the only caveat I've got from my wife because she hates Auckland. Yeah. Um, she, you know, her business is based out of there, but um, she hates it. But yeah, hundred percent. I'd, I'd give. It's sort of my, if I was to say what I want to be in life as a forty-year-old male, uh, it'd be to go back and be the CEO of Ngāti to a Wodake, um, and and help deliver for the wider whānau there. So I am probably um, a little bit more connected with my whātuatanga than my my. Mangapui tanga, but yep. um, oh yeah, that's uh, generational trauma, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I get that. Get I get that. And uh, oh, Ngati Fatua got all those uh, real expensive properties in uh, in central Auckland, anyway, bro. Man, the the Komatoa flats <laughs> up there, holy moly! Yeah, yeah. You know, my nan was uh, was living in them before she passed, and um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> just looking out onto out over Dev, Devonport, 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 yeah. Um, you know, yeah. and it's quite. You stand on the waterfront in Auckland, and you just look from left to right, and you just see buildings, yeah, like buildings, 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 and all of a sudden you just see this mass green space. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's where the Marys live. Oh, yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all cool. Yeah. That's good to know, bro. Um, yeah, because I, I always feel like there's a pull for all of us to, to go back. I think as much as I love it here and I never want to leave, I think the, the reality is I'm going to end up moving back home just to just to yes. serve the community. Well, from what I hear, Queenstown's the um, the weekend retreat for Aucklanders anyway, so yeah. maybe yeah. I can go back and still live here, you know. Oh, I mean, we've got such a tight Māori community here, though. Yeah. We're really, really tight, eh? Yeah. So, because um, there's so few of us, obviously, you know. Well, but, yeah. yeah. I'd <laughs> argue with that. Me and Mike would argue with that. Uh, with, oh, about how small it is. About how many Māori that, you know, Māori that probably identifies Māori, I think yeah. you're definitely right. Yeah, yeah, I, I, like when I say the Māori community, I mean people who, who make a conscious effort to yeah. join the community. Yeah. Like, in terms of um, people who live here who are Māori blood, oh, I have no doubt there's way more, mm. but... Um, you know, people who are active within the community, there's not that many of us, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, I mean, that's, that's kind of my desire. Yeah, how do we create a, an atmosphere in a world in which the, the Māori that are Māori are able to come back? You know? And, see, the, the other thing, bro, and sorry to keep dragging this yeah. on, but um, the other thing is... You know, busyness is an excuse here. Yeah. Like some people just don't, can't fit anything into their lives except their work and the their traffic. family. No, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I get that just because you're here mm. and you're Māori doesn't mean you have the time to come and connect into the community and do community um, focused things, right? So, you know, to pe- so many people are time poor here. Um, but. You know, my my hope and your hope, bro, is we can encourage more of us um, oh, to come together. And I think that's the one thing with with Maori that that are active in the Maori community. Uh, I think there's a realization that you know, could all to tell Maori, us as the individual are the most unimportant, unimportant part of that world. You know, Fenua first, Why second, Iwi third. You know, we come last, yeah. and so if there's a desire or need, if we get a call, it's because we understand that hierarchy, 
and that's where the the contentiousness of colonization comes in is because we you know within the western world people are paramount you know and that's the whole you know my whole journey of he ha to me a nui o te ao he tangata he tangata he tangata man we've got to get rid of that whakatauki like there's no tomorrow oh, I know like, there's so many other whakatauki we could be using but it's just it's just incorrect like people yeah. aren't the most important thing in the world people will just be you know the most important thing in the world is aroha aroha <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah on that hohonu rawa atu note bro um on that really deep note yeah. um we'll, we're gonna wrap it up um so before we wrap up do you have any little nuggets of uh um any nuggets of inspiration for our listeners yeah bro um I met with uh, three manata huna that Mike invited me in to speak with some of the rangatahi that had had a couple of days off school to do uh, kaupapa Māori um, leadership sort of kaupapa. Um, and they sort of talked about how uncomfortable it was to be Māori at the kura mm. um, and things like that and sort of sought a little bit of advice around that. And I suppose my, my big thing around is if you're Māori and in this district, you know, we need you to stand up and be proud of who you are and what you do uh, and push the envelope regardless of what your position in, in the hierarchy is and understand that no one's going to thank you for it. That's a thankless task. You're probably yep. going to be attacked for it. Um, you know, you, you, you're going to get some, uh, you're going to get some hate. You're going to get a lot of love. No one's going to thank you for doing it, and neither should they, you mm. know. Um, so I'll be coming, or will be coming, bro, uh, out to the Māori community, uh, whether you're an active participant in Te Ao Māori or not, and we'll be looking for your voice in the next few months. Uh, and, yeah, we, we hope to, to foster an environment in which we can bring a collective corridor and whakaro mm. to council. Yeah. So um yeah, awesome brother. And on that note, uh e mihi atu nei ki a koe e te fatu kura e te fanaunga no uh, ngati fatua. Uh, ai he he pai he pai te rongo ki a uh, ki o korero i te nei wa uh, e mihi ana. And to you guys watching out there, if you have any comments to make, if you've got any, uh, if you've got any any questions, pop them down in the chat box below. Remember to like this and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time on the Tune Matewa.